Uh, so I'm going to go through the setup process to show you how to make this building in Redfern. Uh, starting with the um, building shell uh, using this uh, AutoCAD file that you should have and then uh, moving on maybe afterwards to doing these neighbouring buildings. Uh, but uh, maybe I'll do them a bit more simplified so I'm not going to worry about the parapets or anything we'll just do or the roof shapes, just do blocks for all the neighbours' um, building forms. Um, so, so the first thing is just to make sure you've got this AutoCAD file uh, with uh, a good idea of the measurements. So you can see there that we've got these dimensions here which are you know, written as uh, they should have been measured on, uh, on the site. But if you actually measure in AutoCAD, you'll see that they're not completely accurate. So 15 um, metres and 17 mil is the uh, the drawn dimension but the figured dimension there is 15.015 and so we're going to try and work with those figured dimensions instead of the uh, the sizes that have been drawn in AutoCAD. So back into AutoCAD and I'm going to make a new project using as always just the architectural template and then again standard process I'm going to duplicate my ground floor view before doing anything and then rename that and call it ground floor DWG and then go to the insert tab and if you haven't been doing this uh, link CAD uh, it's good to think about um, when you want to use that option basically because you can use import CAD if you don't think the file is going to change but there's, there's every chance you might go in and uh, make that drawing better. Uh, and so if you use LinkCAD, then you can always yeah, bring in the changes. Yeah. So that's the option I use normally, LinkCAD. And then I'm going to go and browse to find that AutoCAD file. Uh, oh yeah, so what I've done though, is I've exported the plan. So I've got there a ground floor um, and a first floor plan. And it's really important that you think about that when you work in AutoCAD, you'll often have everything together. But when you're working in Revit, of course, each level is set up in its own view. So that's what we have here. I don't know why I've got cars. Oh, I think maybe that is a car park. And uh, so anyhow, we've got there um, the ground floor separated and Oh yeah, so the cars, I didn't even notice the cars there. Uh, and I've tidied that up a little bit. And, uh, and so again, it's really important to split your drawings up that way because if you bring this in to the ground floor, you've got the first floor there and all the elevations and sections and you've got to crop that out or um, you know, think of some way of managing that. But if you've got them separated, it makes it much easier. So again, with ground floor there, uh, in my list of AutoCAD drawings. Uh, I'm also then going to tick current view only because I only want this ground floor drawing to show in my ground floor floor plan. Don't want it to show in the other floor plans or all the 3D views especially. Uh, so I'm going to then also set the um, colours to black and white uh, which is often a good option. Uh, the uh, AutoCAD colours can be a bit hard to read sometimes. And then the import units, if you know them, it's usually a good idea to set them because when it tries to detect them automatically, sometimes it'll uh, think that it's inches or something like that. And then also positioning, it's good to think about that. Sometimes it's, in uh, this case anyway, useful to choose the, um, the location. So manual origin or base point, any of those options with manual. I'm going to click open. Because I've chosen that manual option, now it'll give me a chance to place that plan where I want it to go. Click to place that. And then I'm going to select it. I'm happy with the position now. So now I've selected it, I'm going to pin it so that it doesn't move. 
Um, so now I'm going to put in some reference planes to mark the uh, the corner at least. So this corner point might be my set out. So I'll I'll try to use the outside corner of the building. I'm just going to have a look at my um, my drawings here. So I can be fairly certain that the outer corner there should line up with the outer corner on on the lower floor. So I'll use that as my set out point. So I'm going to mark that with a reference plane. And I might take that all the way down to the other end and again just make sure this one goes beyond that the end of that wall. So just make sure that lines up exactly. And that's correct. You can see the line weight is um, going to one side of the reference plane, but if I turn the line weight off, the reference plane sits exactly on the corner. So now if I go to my level one view, I know where the corner of the building is. So I'm going to right click and again duplicate this view, duplicate this detailing if you want to, but duplicate here would do the same thing. Rename and call this level one DWG. Insert link CAD and get my first wall view. Oh yeah, yep. Current view only is turned on and I've got all the other same options. So I'm just going to click open, click to place it roughly, select it, click move and then pick it up on the corner and snap it to the intersection of my reference planes. So again, I know that's lined up, and it was, oh, let's just make sure I feel this a bit off. Uh, so I'm going to click on the line work tool, and you can see there, actually, we've got an extra line. And so let's just have a look back in AutoCAD and see what's happening there. Yeah, okay, so it's a bit messy the way this has been drawn. So let's try and work out. Yeah, this is just one of those inaccuracies you'll get when you bring things from uh, Illustrator. So I'm going to draw a line projecting from the ground floor with auto on and see where it should line up. And yeah, so I got it right the first time. So that's right. So that X is an extra line. It was probably just a mistake. And I'll fix that later. Uh, but uh, for now, I've got this lined up at the right point. So that's, that's okay. Uh, and so then can look at modelling and so you've got to make a decision when you first start drawing things like uh, particularly existing walls but really any walls uh, how you're going to manage them whether you're going to try and have walls that project all the way through your building so if you've got walls that have a, a common thickness on different levels that's a pretty good approach but where the walls change thickness it's sometimes going to be easier to have, or definitely is going to be easier to have uh, different walls on each level. So I'm going to measure just to get an idea. So these are 250 on the ground floor, and then on the first floor, they're 250 there. Up here though, they're 250 on the first floor, but then on the ground floor, they look to me, yep, 450. Now, if you really want to, you could have just these walls separated and, uh, and then have the, the walls down here as a continuous wall going all the way through. But just for simplicity's sake, it's probably easier to do new walls on um, on the level above, because there's enough of a change there to make it worth it. And um, so you just need to remember that as you're modelling. In some cases, it will be easier to split your walls up across the levels, and then you have to join them together later using the join tool to make them read as one on the outside. Uh, okay, so to set those walls up, I'm going to put in some more reference planes. Uh, so again, just using pick lines here. I can pick the AutoCAD lines like I did earlier. Okay, so remember I was saying earlier that 
we want the dimensions to be done with these figured dimensions and not the, um, the things that have been drawn in AutoCAD. So I can select this reference plane now. And you'd think it would give me a dimension. It will, but not in this view. So it's dimensioning to the nearest thing, which is the AutoCAD line work. So if I go, well, firstly, I need to know that number, 15015. And if I go back to the ground floor view without my drawing, now when I select the reference plane, I can easily see that dimension. So 15015. Okay, it's going to be slightly off. Fairly visible, so that's good. And then the other way, I'll do the same thing. So, yeah, I'm going to check. I may have even done this AutoCAD um, drawing again for you. Let's see what I've done there. Oh, no, I haven't. Okay. All right, so again, I'm going to draw in a reference plane for that back wall. And also, oh now I didn't check the measurement, so 27,200. So back here now. And notice it's really important that I select this reference plane, not this one. Just like earlier, I selected the reference plane at the bottom, not the one at the top. Because I want that set out point to remain no matter what. Okay, so here, uh, 27,200, wasn't it? So, yeah, so that one's a bit more obvious that it's moved there. Okay, so you can even mark that point if you really want to, but uh, you should be able to remember that it's, uh, it's fixed. And so um, a good uh, option there would be to select both of those reference planes with uh, with control and then pin them as well so no matter what you won't move those uh, and uh, so even this one so this one now shouldn't move uh, and there's every chance you're going to keep that back wall in some form even if you're going to put holes in it so I can pin that as well and also this wall that's a boundary wall Again, just want to make sure of that measurement. So 15015, I'm pretty sure I put it in, but yep, double checking. Uh, and again, pin that. So anything that shouldn't move. So I can't even stretch that now. That's okay, I don't really need to stretch it. But just as an example, I can unpin that. Maybe just to bring that out and then pin it again. So then now we have the um, fire stairs. So, again, checking that measurement. I don't know what it should be, but the measurement that's coming up is 69.1. And that isn't going to be very fun to work with if we're uh, putting walls on later, so why not round it off to 70? And if you're taking measurements on site, you would never measure 69.1 or anything like that anyway. So, again, it's just the way it's been drawn in AutoCAD. Uh, so, now getting back to um, the other wall there. Put some reference planes in for those. Hopefully getting pretty used to the technique. Uh, getting the basic setup off for AutoCAD line work. And then um, yeah, modifying the measurements as you see fit. So here, 4100 I think is fine, and this way, uh, that's a funny one, let's say 2930, yeah, and well you probably don't, you're probably not all that familiar with the building yet, have you looked at this fire stair yet? No, so I think you need to retain it, but they might change it this year. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, so again, those can be pinned there. So that's the basic shell. And then I can uh, check it in level one. You can see all of those pretty clearly. And um, so just to take you through the process, you're probably pretty used to these things, so I'm not going to spend too long on it. But in my elevations, I don't have any walls yet, but I can still tell really clearly how big the building is. I can extend the levels out if I want to, which usually is a good idea. Okay, so that, that might give you a good idea why reference planes are so useful. Um, and then, oh yeah, so the, uh, so the levels actually should be modified a bit, or I should add more levels. So I'm going to put in at least one more level for the, um, well, a couple of options here. What do you think should be the next thing above level one? That's, that's actually what I'd use. Yeah, so oh. I'd probably go for the parapet. Oh. Yeah, um, so top of wall. Uh, and that's often with construction um, where everything's going to be set out from. Uh, you could make one for the ceiling. That'd be another option. Mm -hmm. But I actually find it works better in Revit if you make a level above the ceiling and then if you need to put the ceiling levels in, um, mm -hmm. add them later. It's just a bit of a technical Revit thing. So yeah, so top of wall's a good one. And I just wanted to show you that, bi partly because it'll be useful for the walls in a minute, but also if I go and look in that top of wall floor plan that I've got now, notice how I can't see the reference plane. It's because they're not long enough and I need to extend those now. So it's a bit tedious, I have to go and unpin them and then uh, modify them. But it's well worth it because you will want to see those reference planes at least in that view. So same here. Okay, so now top of wall, we'll show you those reference plates. Uh, and it's actually a good reason for making your levels um, early. Um, so I'll put a, a grid in just so you can see why. If I go and make a, a grid now, and you'll need, you'll need grids here eventually. Let's put one in then that will automatically show if I go down to ground floor. It'll be there. And if we look at it in one of these views, you can see it's long enough because the level was already there. So if you've got a building where you have lots of grids and horizontal references, you know, reference planes and things, uh, it's highly recommended that you put in the levels at least to go to the highest point in the building first and then, then put those things in. Um, okay, so then just to get your walls set up, I won't do all of it, but just so you can get the basic set up. Probably doesn't hurt to do it here. Uh, so we've got those 250 walls, so just using the wall tool, uh, starting with one of the generic walls. For existing walls, they're usually fine. So I'm just going to duplicate and make a new one called existing 250 mil. May as well change the um, the course fill pattern. We're not going to use phases. I wish we, if we'd started this project from the very beginning, I probably would have shown you phases, but I don't think we'll have time to do that. So we're just going to use the course patterns to show existing walls, and then uh, maybe I can make that 250 thickness. I'll just leave finishes the material for now. And then we can set the height to level one. And then picking the reference planes. 
really important, not the um, not the AutoCAD drawing. And oops, sorry, I better undo that. And making sure the location line set to King's face exterior. If you really want to, you could lock the walls to your reference planes. But uh, I'd be pretty sure they won't move, so I wouldn't worry too much about things like that. So again, I'm just being careful there to make sure that I do pick the reference planes and not the um, AutoCAD lines. And then I'll come back and just trim afterwards. Oops, one more. Um, okay, so we've got then the, well, a bit hard to see now. Um, so a good trick there is to have wireframe and um, and course set for the uh, uh, the view. So there, I've just set those in the view control bar, wireframe and course. And then my AutoCAD hatching is hiding the walls still. So I'm going to go then into visibility graphics in the view properties over here, just click the edit button there and then imported categories and you can see the ground floor AutoCAD file and there's a wall hatch layer. So you can turn that off and then more easily see the, um, you know, the levered objects where we've got the AutoCAD hatch. And so then I know this wall is 450 so I'll just go to uh, Edit type again, duplicate, make that 450, and change the thickness there to match. Everything else should be okay. So then we've got a, a yet another wall thickness here. So yeah, close enough to 650. So again, same approach. Duplicating the walls. Now it changes as you go along the building. So down here, it's back to being, I'm pretty sure, a 250 wall again. Close enough, 245 is what's been drawn, but we'll say it's 250. So it's at this point, well it's a bit of a funny one, but yeah, we'll say it's at that point that it changes. So you need to split this wall. I'm just going to highlight it so you know. So it's this wall I want to split using the split element tool. Just click there on the AutoCAD line for now. And well, actually, no. Sorry, I'll undo that because you could you could do that initially, but we know that we've got a um, a party wall here or a wall that's dividing those two. Um, two tenancies, or what at one stage might have been two tenancies. So again, with a reference plane, you can set that out. And well, okay, my assumption was wrong. I was assuming that that would have lined up with the wall. Maybe it does actually. If we move it onto this one, it, it could have been easily drawn wrong. But there's also a chance that this wall's been added to. And it's this wall that was the original, and that that one lines up. And I'd say that's that's probably the case. So, okay, so there. <laughs> okay, look at these measurements. So seven one five eight and seven one five six. Uh, so they probably were meant to be even, uh, but uh, doesn't matter if they're slightly different. So let's say seven one five seven. What's that going to be? That's pretty terrible, but. And that makes the other one 7158. So why not 7160? And then the other one 7155. Uh, in fact, the other way around maybe is better because this one has the extra wall thickness, so 7155. Again, it's just easy to work with round numbers. So that's still pretty close to where that edge is, and that will be a good, good point to use. So I'm just going to switch to the other ground floor view to make it easier and then again using split element now I'm going to try and snap to the um, reference plane and then this 
the separated wall can be set back to the other wall thickness, the existing 250. And so then I can simply select all of those walls. Notice I'm only going to select one of the walls at the front there. I'm going to leave this thick one. Uh, and then I'm going to use copy to clipboard. And now go to level one. And simply cl click on the down arrow under paste and then just choose align to current view. And then now I can set this wall back to 250 and use trim to join these two. Because actually, I'm pretty sure it's the same thickness all the way across the front there. Just double check that. Yeah, so, uh, so again, here I'm just going to set the graphics the same wireframe, fine. So, fine will just get rid of the coarse fill pattern. And then going into here. Ah, that one doesn't have a layer for the hatch. That's great. Well, this is a good chance to show you um, AutoCAD. So, AutoCAD will let me select all my hatches fairly easily. And, uh, well, that was silly of me. I haven't made a layer yet. So, I better make a layer. Okay, so I can put all of those hatches, except for these ones, onto my wall hatch layer. Make sure the colour is set to by layer. Save the file. Back in Revit, go to Manage, Manage Links, CAD Formats, select my file, and then Reload. Click OK, and then now have a look at my imported categories in view properties and there you can see I've got the wall hatch layer now so I can turn that off and check my walls but I've also got the underlay there from the ground floor so I'm going to set that to none so that that's not confusing things there we are so now looking in the 3D view you can see I've got the wall set up pretty well um, I'm going to check that the height of those walls is set exactly to the top of wall level without any other offsets because you'll often get that if it's a different height to the ground floor. So I'm going to make the top offset there zero. Notice I didn't worry about the actual heights of those levels because we can always check those later once we get the section from AutoCAD. And then that top of wall level can move up or down and the walls will just go with it. So that will give you the basic shell. Like I was saying, later you can always use the join tool, join geometry, to join those walls together. Because you might be thinking, well, these walls are the same thickness, so they should read as one wall. And when you use join, choose those two walls, they will read as one. And even these walls that have different thicknesses, because they've got the same material, they'll read as one on the sides where they're, where they're flushed. can join a lot of things together, even these ones can be joined. There we go. So I'll give you some time to get that set up and then you can look at getting the um, piers and the other things with your better the footings for your truck essentially. Yep. So uh, yeah, give you some time to do that.